welcome everyone to this, my second State of the University address. Uh, for me, this last year, my first year as Chancellor, has been truly remarkable. A wonderful opportunity to meet with many of you, hear your ideas about our future, hear your concerns about where we are today, and together enter a dialogue to make our university stronger. I'll be continuing this tradition of listening to us across the, the broad diversity of our many sites and uh, the great diversity of our family that is UCSF today. Now I'm here to say that 150 years old and counting, UCSF is strong and getting stronger. By myriad measures, our culture of innovation, collaboration and public service across all of our missions, education, research, clinical care and community service is driving the university forward. By harnessing these strong traditions of collaboration, innovation and public service, we are able to add uh, greatly to the health, the economy and the intellectual vitality of our own community, our region and our state. Now today, I'm going to frame my remarks around four themes that have emerged as priorities for me in dialogue with you over the last year. One is to further a culture of continuous learning for all members of our community. Two, to build transformative partnerships to enhance our societal impact. Three, to build out a comprehensive platform for precision medicine to lead the revolution in bioscience and healthcare delivery. And four, to champion equity and inclusion, leverage our differences and address the health disparities that are still present in our community. Investment of my energy and campus resources in these priorities by both the campus, the health system and our four schools will complement and extend ongoing investment in what I call our essential core strengths in research, clinical care and education. Now before I delve into some of the exciting work that is already going on in each of these four thematic areas, let me first take a few minutes to highlight some of the milestones and accomplishments over the last year and there have been many and this will be just a select few. In February, after more than a decade of planning and construction under the visionary leadership of CEO Mark Larratt and his team, we realized an ambitious dream, the opening of UCSF Medical Center at Mission Bay. This $1.5 billion facility is now operating at full capacity and is transforming the experience of our patients and our staff who are operating in these wonderful new hospitals. More than a thousand donors contributed $575 million for this project. And I would especially grateful to the Benioff, Moore, Baker and Conway families for their visionary support. With the expansion of our clinical programs enabled by the opening of the Mission Bay Hospitals, the addition of UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital Oakland and steady growth in our research, research portfolio UCSF is now a $5 billion a year enterprise. This remarkably represents 55% growth over the last five years. Almost 60% of our operating revenue comes from our health system or patient care, and 30% is for funding through research. Both are tough, competitive environments requiring exceptional faculty talent, dedicated and passionate staff and nimble, decisive management for us to succeed. Although just 5% of our operating budget now comes from the state and tuition combined, these funds remain important for supporting education, maintenance and other core operations of the university. For the second year in a row, UCSF's four professional schools top the nation in biomedical research funding from the National Institutes of Health. These highly competitive funds, which totaled $546.6 million in contracts and grants combined, reflect the high caliber of research in our top ranked schools 
of dentistry, pharmacy, nursing and medicine, as well as the graduate division. These funds, combined with more than $600 million from non-federal sources, enable UCSF scientists and clinicians to advance our fundamental understanding of biology through pure curiosity-driven research, to help further our understanding of human disease, including the critical social and behavioral determinants of human health. We are very fortunate in continuing to gain the support and confidence of our donor community. For the second year in a row, I'm proud to say that we have set record highs for not only UCSF, but record highs for all 10 campuses of the UCSF system, raising almost $609 million in cash through private support for more than 23,000 donors. That is a 37% increase in funding over our last year record high. The generosity has an enormous impact, propelling the work of our researchers, clinicians and students and allowing us to change people's lives for the better. The 2012 fundraising initiative concluded early in June, exceeding the goal we had set by raising $150 million to support scholarships, fellowships and awards. The Discovery Fellows Program met its fundraising goal one year early as well to support graduate students engaged in basic science research. Researchers at UCSF rely on graduate students to bring energy, ideas and new collaborations to their labs. The $60 million fund, the largest endowed PhD education program in UC history, started with a gift from Sir Michael Moritz and Harriet Heyman and many matching gifts, both from internal UCSF supporters and many individual donors. This year, Michael and Harriet extended the challenge, offering an additional $6 million match. Let me provide just one other example of where visionary philanthropy is advancing our impact and innovation in curiosity, basic science truly the vibrant heart of our research effort. Thanks to the generosity of Herb and the late Marion Sandler, the UCSF program in Breakthrough Biomedical Research, or PIBR, was created in 1998 to support young scientists engaged in high-risk, high-return science, a critical area that all universities struggle to fund. Today, 17 years later, PIBR is unique in academia in its size, scale, and its focus on basic science. The program's initial and ongoing funds from the Sandler Foundation has achieved amazing results. It has produced over 365 projects, $22 million in additional philanthropy from other sources, an amazing $1.2 billion in highly competitive follow-up funding, about 2,250 peer-reviewed publications and more than 60 patents. In many ways, the NIH program for young innovators was modeled on the UCSF PIBA program. Equally impressive to these statistics are the scientists who, with PIBA support, have been granted the freedom to uncover mysteries of the mind and body. Among them is Saul Vieta, a Sandler Faculty Fellow in the Anatomy Department. Saul and his colleagues conduct research on aging and regeneration. They recently published a paper in the journal Nature Medicine describing the rejuvenating effects of young blood on neuronal and cognitive function in aging animals. Now Saul is interested in understanding what drives regeneration and cognitive repair in the aging brain and how the effects of aging can be reversed. His goal is not necessarily to extend life, but to improve life as we age. The son of immigrants from Guatemala, Saul is the first person in his family to become a scientist. Saul first came to UCSF in 2003 during a summer program 
uh, where he was inspired by the words of Arturo, Arturo Alvarez Bulla, one of our preeminent neuroscientists. And today, Saul himself hopes to inspire young students who come from uh, underserved backgrounds to show them anything is possible. Now, I will continue to focus my efforts on continuing to raise support for basic scientists. And I'm pleased to announce that just last week in Washington, the Kavli Foundation established a $20 million endowment for our basic neuroscientists by gifting UCSF $10 million in a matching program. Now another highlight for me personally this year is the appointment of two distinguished colleagues to my leadership team. Dan Lowenstein as Executive Vice Chancellor and Provost and Talmadge King as the Dean of the School of Medicine and Vice Chancellor for Medical Affairs. Both are tried and true leaders at UCSF. Dan brings many perspectives to his role, having been a neurology resident, postdoctoral fellow, epilepsy physician scientist, principal investigator, and professor of neurology, all at UCSF. He has been repeatedly recognized as a champion of social justice and inclusion for faculty, staff, and students of all backgrounds. Talmadge, an international expert on fibrotic lung diseases, has served UCSF exceptionally well as vice chair and then chair of the Department of Medicine, our biggest department, and chief of medical services at San Francisco General Hospital and Trauma Center. He has a long-standing commitment to addressing health disparities and supporting the development of young faculty, and I welcome them to my team. Every year, members of our community are lauded with many honors and awards. Let me recognize just a few of them today. After watching troubling events unfold across the country in 2013-14, UCSF students responded by starting a National White Coats for Black Lives movement to call attention to racial disparities that exist in many sectors of our community, including the higher education and healthcare sectors. At UCSF, their voices for change have galvanized us to critically examine and address our individual biases and the institutional barriers that still exist to unqualified inclusion uh, in our community. For their collective efforts to advance civil rights, the students organizers of White Coats for Black Lives were honored recently with a hero award from the San Francisco Human Rights Commission and some of these students are here today, and let's thank them for their work. Every year, Popular Science, I'm sure you all read it, honors the 10 <laughs> brightest young scientists and engineers from around their country. I quote, researchers whose ideas will transform the future. In September, chemical biologist Zev Gartner, an associate professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry in the School of Pharmacy, was named among the brilliant 10. Zev's <laughs> Zev's team has developed a technique to build tiny models of human tissues called organoids, more precisely than ever before, using a process that turns cells into the biologic equivalent of Lego bricks. The new technique allows researchers to create arrays of thousands of custom-designed organoids in a matter of hours. Recently, Zev built breast tissue on a chip with two cell types to understand how cells assemble and how they break down and become metastatic, yielding new clues to the fundamental understanding of cancer progression. Marilyn Dodd, Emeritus Professor in the Department of Physiologic Nursing, will be honored just next week by the American Academy of Nursing as a living legend. 
Marilyn is being recognized for her significant contributions to nursing practice research and education during a distinguished career that has spanned four decades. She is best known for her outstanding and visionary contributions to patient self-care and to the science of symptom management. Her self-care innovation model has been widely tested and extended to provide critical skills and support to patients and their families. And speaking of legends, I want to acknowledge the loss of two UCSF leaders, Chancellor Emeritus Crevens and F. Engelman, both of whom passed away recently. As UCSF's fifth chancellor, Julie Crevens was a national leader in guiding health policy and medical education and championing science and supporting particularly our basic scientists. His leadership put UCSF on the map in a scientific revolution that continues today. F was a prime pioneering rheumatologist whose commitment to his patients and research kept him working until the day he died at age 104. As director of the Rosalind Russell Ephraham P. Engelman Rheumatology Research Center, renamed in his honor just last year, F lived to be one of the oldest practicing physicians in the world. Among his 10 commandments for longevity, and I quote, enjoy your work, whatever it is, or don't do it. <laughs> Julie and F each personified with great style what makes UCSF special and each leave a lasting legacy. Now before turning to the four priority areas that I introduced at the beginning of my presentation, let me say that I have heard very clearly from many of you your concerns and thoughts as to how we can make UCSF stronger. My leadership team and I take these concerns very seriously. Foremost amongst them in this last year is the growing affordability crisis in the Bay Area the yin and yang of operating in such a vibrant and exciting city. This issue affects us all, whether it is access to affordable housing, student debt, or the increasing time and expense of commute to get to work. There are no easy answers to these problems, but my leadership team will be focused on these issues in the coming year. I am also aware that after more than a decade of investment in superb research and clinical facilities on the Mission Bay campus, we must now focus attention and resources to reimagine and reinvigorate the Panassas and Mount Zion campuses. I have asked Provost Dan Lowenstein to head a work group st to study this issue, and I look forward to giving this the attention it deserves in the coming year. So now on to my priorities. The first priority is to build on our foundation as a destination for continuous learning and professional development for all who study and work here. UCSF, after all, remains at its core a health sciences university. We continue to transform the educational experience involving students, professional and graduate to chart a course that makes the best use of technology, the science of learning, and the wealth and talent of our educators. We now need to extend this commitment to continuous learning for our students across our campus to engage and benefit all our UCSF family, including students, faculty, staff, residents, postdocs, and even our patients as lifelong learners. Informing this priority are our health professional schools, which are working to redesign their curricula to educate students who are capable of lifelong learning and leadership. Under the direction of Vice Dean Catherine Lucy, the School of Medicine will formally launch 
the Bridges curriculum in the upcoming year. Faculty, students, residents, and educational leaders have designed a curriculum that will teach students how to work together with interprofessional teams to master and reliably apply today's knowledge. As they progress through the curriculum, they will directly contribute value to the health systems that host their learning. Bridges will teach them to move beyond the limits of what we know today and to measure and continuously improve the quality of health care for diverse patients and populations. They will learn to deliver the highest value, most patient-centered care possible. The School of Pharmacy's Doctor of Pharmacy curriculum is in the initial stages of its most significant transformation in two decades. Vice Dean Sharon Yeomans is leading the UCSF Bridges Pharmacy Curriculum Project, which is targeted to launch fully in 2017. The project will allow pharmacy students and medical students to work together and learn together in several of their curricular experiences. The coursework is designed to meet the shortage of healthcare professionals and the surge in chronic diseases we are experiencing today. They will take advantage of recent legislation giving pharmacists much overdue opportunities to expand their scope of practice and lead in new ways through advanced training. The schools of nursing and dentistry are also making important curricular changes. Through its Center for Global Health, the School of Nursing is advancing the role of the nurse as a global health leader and frontline responder. As we saw in the Ebola outbreak and the earthquake in Nepal, nurses around the world respond to complex health crises by delivering the bulk of urgent care. To advance this role, the center is developing a course in disaster preparedness for our nursing students in the global health minor who would like to join disaster response and relief efforts around the globe. Now these school-based global health initiatives nicely complement the extraordinary impact our program in global health sciences is having in educating students in global health and public health from around the world and by directly addressing global health issues. The important component of this priority is to emphasize that learning on campus does not stop with the students we enroll. The priority to create a destination for continuous learning includes expanding opportunities for, for the professional development of our staff. During the last year, UCSF's Learning and Organization Development Department has greatly increased its training for staff to include multi-session programs on professional and leadership competencies and has launched a new website with two portals for self-paced learning. And this fall, based on your feedback through the employee engagement survey and the conversations I've had with many staff groups through the year, UCSF will debut a new online development resource with hundreds of e-courses, live events, and a video channel. Staff will be able to take online courses at no charge, obtain continuing education credits for some specialties, and take courses towards several business certifications. A second priority for me is building transformative partnerships to take advantage of the remarkable geography we occupy, arguably the most innovative and exciting in the world. More than ever, our success, I believe, depends on capitalizing on the talents and resources of our dynamic Bay Area neighbors, both public and private. Now, partnerships are, of course, not new to UCSF. We currently partner with many institutions, both public and private, to achieve our goals. So before describing possible future directions under this priority, let me tell you about two established partnerships that are a source of pride to us all. First, UCSF has a long-standing partnership with the city and county of San Francisco at the San Francisco General Hospital and Trauma Center. 
where about 2,000 UCSF employees work every day. The UCSF-SFGH partnership is known worldwide for adopting pioneering health interventions that translate, into research, translate our research discovery into better clinical care, particularly for the underserved in our communities. Both UCSF and the city and county of San Francisco are recommitting to providing high quality care at SFGH now and for future generations. This commitment is being demonstrated by the city's construction of a new hospital, which will open in spring 2016, just a few short months from now. This summer, the San Francisco Board of Supervisors and the UC Regents, as well with mayoral support, approved a preliminary term sheet for a 75-year land lease at San Francisco General Hospital for our university. This agreement now allows us to proceed with the design of a state-of-the-art research building that will complement the wonderful new hospital and support the more than $100 million annual research budget at San Francisco General Hospital. The second established partnership I will highlight today is our work with community-based organizations to provide educational and training opportunities for local residents. Danika Sali lives in San Francisco's Southeast sector. Seeking to expand her career opportunities, Danika entered our Excellence Through Community Engagement and Learning, or EXCEL program. Now EXCEL is a partnership between UCSF under the direction of Vice Chancellor Barbara French, the city's human services agency, and the Jewish vocational services. To date, Excel, the Excel program has graduated 127 San Francisco residents, and more than 70% of them have secured temporary or career administrative positions at UCSF. Over the last five years, more than 40 UCSF departments have hosted Excel interns. After graduating from the work-based learning program last year, Danika is now employed as a new patient coordinator for the Department of Urology. She is a great example of someone who can excel when given the opportunity and encouragement. Danika is here with us today and thank you for your contribution. <laughs> Now, complementing these community partnerships, industry partnerships are becoming ever more important for maximizing our societal impact and fulfilling our contract as a public research university. In recent years, with leadership from the Provost Office and the Office of Research, we have revamped and streamlined UCSF's approach to industry partnerships to help move research more quickly and strategically from the laboratory to clinical trials and patient treatment. The dedicated staffs in the offices of UCSF Innovation, Technology and Alliances, the offices of Sponsored Research, the Clinical and Translation Science Institute and QB3 lead these efforts. To further strengthen our collaboration and coordination with external partners, I have created a new umbrella office for innovation and partnerships that will be proactive in assessing strategic opportunities and making UCSF a best-in-class partner for a wide range of transformative partnerships. A national search for the inaugural leader of this new office is underway, and I thank Charlie Craig from the School of Pharmacy for his leadership in this recruitment effort. Now, last year in my address, I mentioned a burgeoning tri-institutional partnership between UCSF, UC Berkeley, and Lawrence Berkeley National Labs in the areas of genomics, computational science, and molecular imaging. I'm excited about the progress that this pilot project has shown and would now like to introduce and share with you a potentially truly transformative expansion of these relationships. Over the past few months, I have been in discussions with UC Berkeley Chancellor 
Nicholas Dirks around the development of an entirely new campus at Richmond Bay to be known as the Berkeley Global Campus. The Richmond Bay site is in many ways uh, mirrors our own Mission Bay campus. It is 130 acres of completely undeveloped land right on the bay just south of the Richmond Bridge. One can already imagine the ferry traffic between our two campuses. As envisaged by Chancellor Dirks and in his words, the Berkeley Global Campus represents an entirely new model for education globalization that inverts the usual model whereby universities globalize by establishing themselves in sites all around the world. Instead, this new model proposes to invite the world's leading universities to come to join us here in the Bay Area. As such, the Berkeley Global Campus represents an innovative vision for education globalization in the 21st century. Its realization would provide a foundry for a new generation of globally interconnected scholars, intellectuals, and policymakers, all dedicated to applying cutting edge science to address the world's most pressing environmental, political, economic, and social challenges, including, of course, challenges that are central to UCSF's mission. Chancellor Dirks and I have had very positive discussions with several potential elite international partners, and I'm very encouraged by the excitement that these discussions are generating. Now, I emphasize that at this moment, these discussions are in their earliest stage, and extensive campus conversation needs to occur at UCSF before we would consider making binding commitments and joining UC Berkeley in this bold venture as a founding campus member of the Berkeley Global Campus. Another potentially groundbreaking partnership now under discussion is the launch of the San Francisco Cancer Initiative, the brainchild of Alan Ashworth, who moved from his leadership post in London to UCSF in January of this year to become our new director of the Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center. This initiative would involve the city and county, as well as our community, to focus on the health outcomes and reduce cancer-related health disparities across the breadth of San Francisco. Alan is calling this a precision population health initiative. Now, over the last, uh, our health system is also growing through transformative partnerships. Over the last year, we have successfully aligned the clinical practices in the School of Medicine with UCSF Medical Center to create a new, fully integrated health system we are now calling UCSF Health. UCSF's health new organizational structure fosters unified decision-making and management across the traditional boundaries of the UCSF Medical Center and the School of Medicine. Mark Larratt and his executive team, Talmadge King, and all the chairs of our clinical departments are key leaders in this transformation of our health delivery system, and I thank them for their vision, trust, and engagement in this truly transformative reorganization. To succeed in today's intensely competitive healthcare environment, UCSF Health must grow and greatly expand our reach to patients by partnering with healthcare providers across the Bay Area. In the coming year, we will continue to the growth of UCS Health through further transformative partnerships and affiliations throughout the Bay Area. These new partnerships will build on our recent affiliations with UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital Oakland, the Benioff Ch Children's Physician Foundation, the John Muir Health System, and Hospice by the Bay. By building our own health system, we are creating the foundation for a Bay Area accountable care organization or network that is poised to begin enrolling patients in 2017. On October 26th, 
in just a couple of weeks, we will launch a publicity campaign to introduce the UCSF Health brand to our community and region. The theme for this campaign, Redefining Possible, describes the overall impact that UCSF has on the health and well-being of the Bay Area and beyond. Now, one of the patients featured in this UCSF Health campaign is Miguel Castellino, Castellinos. Miguel used to wake up every day to run before he went to work as a garbage collector, a job he held for nearly 25 years. One morning, as he was dumping a can at the back of his truck, a driver accidentally hit him from behind, instantly severing both of his legs above the knee. He was rushed to the city's only level one trauma center at San Francisco General Hospital, where UCSF orthopedic trauma surgeon Eric Meinberg was on call. Dr. Meinberg and the trauma expert assessed Miguel's condition, deciding to proceed with double amputation, thus saving his life. Months later, Miguel was referred to the UCSF Department of Orthopedic Surgery on this campus, where he met his first prosthesist, Matthew Garibaldi. Dr. Garibaldi and physical therapists like Rami Weinberg helped Miguel through the grueling rehabilitative process. He learned to walk again and today has become an active inspiration and symbol of hope to thousands of others who have lost limbs but not hope. Thank you, Miguel. Now, our third priority is precision medicine. This university has been on the forefront of this field since its, since its inception, with our campus leaders authoring the definitive white paper on the subject for the National Academy of Sciences in 2011. Both Governor Brown and President Obama each announced precision medicine initiatives in their State of the Union addresses this past year. And I am pleased and proud that UCSF is playing a prominent part in planning both the state and national programs. Esteban Burchard of the School of Pharmacy was appointed to an expert panel advising the NIH on how to develop and proceed with the President's Precision Medicine Initiative. The Governor's California Initiative to Advance Precision Medicine is co-hosted by UCSF and UC Health. A team led by Professors Charles Chu and Joe DeRisi recently received funding from this state initiative for the innovative use of unbiased next generation genomic sequencing to detect all human pathogens in human infections, starting with infections of the central nervous system. In the spirit of transformative partnerships, UCSF's team includes investigators from UCSF, UC Davis, UC Berkeley, and UCLA, and from such private companies as SIAPS, DNA Nexus, Quest Diagnostics, and Google Genomics. This state support also leverages support for this project from the Sandler and William Bowes Foundations, two great supporters of UCSF high-risk innovation. Now, much of the credit for putting precision medicine on the national agenda goes to Keith Yamamoto, our Vice Chancellor for Research. Keith continues to lead UCSF's efforts in precision medicine to build a platform with teams focused on three areas of discovery, basic science, clinical science, and social and behavioral science, and three sets of enabling tools, omics, ranging from genomics to microbiomics and metalomics, computational health sciences and digital health innovation. Tying these elements together is a cohesive as a cohesive platform is a computational knowledge network. Every scientist and scholar at UCSF should know that this platform is wide open for them to jump on board and that precision medicine spans the full spectrum of UCSF's research from fundamental science to our education and patient care missions. We actively seek your participation 
in this bold decade-long endeavour. It is clear we will only fully recognise the promise of precision medicine if we partner with other UC campuses and industry across the state, empowering clinicians and basic scientists alike to build new tools and actionable data sets on very well characterised patient cohorts. To this end, we are actively working to build on the foundations laid by our clinical and translational science institutes to take advantage of the wealth of clinical data through UC Health, which includes UC's five medical centres and six medical schools, caring for more than 13 million patients. This will enable us to do population level research across all UC patients and across the diversity and breadth of California. UCSF is leading this exciting system-wide initiative with the tool Boot, a world-renowned expert in medical and clinical bioinformatics. He is at the helm uh, and we recruited a tool from Stanford University in April of this year to establish a new institute for computational health science on this campus and to lead the system-wide efforts in clinical data sciences as the Executive Director of Clinical Informatics at UC Health. In January 2016, in a few months, a tool will co-chair the Precision Medicine World Conference in the Bay Area, where experts representing basic science, computation, healthcare, venture capital, and the biotechnology industry will gather from around the world. To end on precision medicine, let me highlight the work of Yoshimi Fukuoka, Associate Professor in the School of Nursing, who is using data collected through digital technologies to make lifestyle interventions to prevent the cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes complications. Yoshimi's recent work focuses on developing behavioural algorithms to generate real-time predictions of future intervention failure or successes using large data sets. She is testing these algorithms to identify real-time decision rules that take into account these predictions. Behavioural algorithms can be used to optimise and automate the personalisation of treatments. In addition, her novel approach could have a significant impact on the way we deliver lifestyle interventions in the near future. Now our fourth priority, and the last that I will discuss uh, this afternoon, is championing a culture of equity and inclusion to maximally leverage the power of our differences in the furthering of our missions. This priority includes a doubling down on our efforts to address the pernicious impact of healthcare disparities in our own community and beyond. As I mentioned earlier, prompted in part by the White Coats for Black Lives movement initiated by our own students, we are re-examining our efforts to foster and sustain a campus community and climate where every person feels respected, included and valued. This fall, I convened a forum for members of my own executive cabinet and other leaders on the campus to focus on challenging issues of diversity and race and to brainstorm solutions. It was a powerful and valuable forum to reinforce the critical strategic importance of our future work in this priority. Rene Navarro, who was appointed the first Vice Chancellor in the Office of Diversity and Outreach in 2010, and her team are engaged in several important initiatives. They are working to improve our recruitment and retention of underrepresented faculty, staff and students and to build on our outreach efforts to further build these pipelines. Renee often reminds us that we are all share the responsibility of growing a culture in which everyone from all backgrounds is welcomed, supported, respected, and valued. My, ex <laughs> My executive leadership has approved more funding for the Office of Diversity and Outreach to expand their initiatives, championing a culture of equity and inclusion. 
Now, each school is also making great strides in creating their own action plans. Following a successful leadership retreat, the School of Medicine has undertaken a multi-year initiative to enhance the school's culture of diversity and inclusion. The School of Medicine's orientation last month engaged the incoming students in their first days at UCSF in two days of small group work facilitated by our faculty to understand the power of diverse and inclusive communities in combating the silent epi epidemic of health and education inequities. The School of Dentistry's Center to Address Disparities in Children's Oral Health, or CANDU, has long been a leader in preventing children's oral disease and in promoting children's oral health, especially in low-income and minority populations. Recently, the NIH awarded the School of Dentistry three research awards aimed at eliminating inequities in access to care and improving the oral health care of children in our community, significantly expanding the reach of the CANDU program. In addition, the School of Dentistry Dean John Featherston appointed George Taylor to the new position as Associate Dean of Diversity and Inclusion in July. George is working with faculty and staff, students in the school's leadership team to build and strengthen activities in this area. The Dental School also welcomed three Dreamers to the class of 2019. Now Dreamers is a term used to describe students who are undocumented immigrants who qualify under the Federal Development Relief and Education for Alien Minors, or DREAM Act. We are pleased to welcome Jose Sandoval, Laura Aguilar, and Angie Sellis to UCSF. <laughs> These California residents are standout students who want to give back to their communities after they graduate from the School of Dentistry. First year pharmacy student Tyson Walker also plans to give back to his community. He is a White Mountain Apache who grew up on the Fort Apache and Navajo reservations in Arizona. He says, and I quote, the social and cultural upheaval that historically affected many tribes still adversely affects the health and education of Native Americans. Tyson witnessed firsthand the effects of social inequality compounded over generations and widespread pervasive poverty in his community. Tyson believes that this experience is the foundation of his academic and personal development. Determined to improve the health and well-being of the community, he has worked to heighten the sense of educational possibility in Native American youth. In his application to the School of Pharmacy, Tyson wrote, Today, I find myself at a junction between two worlds. One is the reservation, which holds my cultural lineage. The other is the world of a healthcare professional. As a place of rich cultural diversity and healthcare innovations, I see UCSF as a fitting place for me to bridge the true worlds that I walk in. He later wrote, when I become a pharmacist, I will be doing something significant, not only for myself and for my family, but also for my tribe. My walk in life is with my tribe and pharmacy will give me meaning to my walk. Welcome Tyson. So Tyson urges his classmate in all four of our health professional schools to get informed about Native American health disparities and to make a difference in poor rural communities where they can have the greatest impact. So in closing, I want to call your attention to the concept of One UCSF, an internal engagement campaign design, designed to celebrate the contribution of all members of our community. It is important for us to share our unique stories and reflect on our common bonds as one community devoted to improving health. 
You have probably seen publicity for the One UCSF campaign around the campus over the last year. One of the staff members featured is our Arts and Events Manager, Joey Convento. Joey's is a familiar face to anyone who enjoys arts and events offered through Campus Life Services. Joey truly exemplifies the CLS motto, making life better here. Among the 200 veteran employees at UCSF today, Joey bravely defended our men and women in the military by doing one of the most dangerous jobs on the planet, defusing roadside bombs amid enemy forces in Afghanistan. This summer, Joey was part of UCSF's number one fundraising team in the Bay Area in the AIDS Walk San Francisco, generating more than $140 million for programs and services around HIV. And tomorrow, Joey will be working to make the Mission Bay Block Party the great success it has been in past years. So Joey, a member of the UCSF community for more than 25 years, I'm, I'm delighted to have you with us uh, here today. So today I have highlighted just a few of the great people who make UCSF a wonderful place to work and learn. You are what sets UCSF apart. In closing, please remember good days and bad days, and I know we have both, that ours is a noble mission no matter what you do, your contribution is important. You are making a difference. So thanks to all of you who are here in the audience or are watching via the web for your efforts in redefining possible. And please join me at a reception outside. I'm happy to take a few questions. Thank you. A very bright light in my eye, but uh, please Hi, go ahead. Chancellor. Kevin Eisman from University Relations. We have just a few questions submitted online and from people who are viewing the live stream. First up, what is UCSF doing to improve cybersecurity? Uh, so um, the question is, what is UCSF doing to improve cybersecurity? It is of critical importance to us, perhaps our highest uh, current risk in our risk assessment uh, portfolio. I have asked Joe Benford, the uh, Chief of Information uh, for both the health system and the campus to take a personal lead and directly report to me on our initiatives in cybersecurity. Fortunately, with Joe's leadership, I think we are ahead of the curve, but we have a long way to go and we will only get there with the complete cooperation and support from the entire UCSF community. Uh, Joe is doing terrific work. He is, uh, in fact, a leader across the UC system in this effort. And I would just ask you to be responsive to Joe and his team as you hear from him over the next weeks to months in terms of steps we must take uh, to keep ahead of this very real threat. So thank you for that question. Good afternoon, Chancellor. Thank you for your pillar on the well-being of learners and our staff and our faculty. My name is Judy Young and I work at the UCSF National Center of Excellence in Women's Health. Uh, responsible for community partnerships, our young women's leader leadership initiatives, and our diversity programs. This month, the Center of Excellence in Women's Health is taking a stand against interpersonal violence, as is Mayor Lee. More than four million women experience physical assault, rape, verbal and emotional abuse by their partners. There are lifelong personal and professional consequences to these, to these health issues. And all of us are impacted as loved ones, friends, colleagues, and um, partners. All of us can act to mitigate this epidemic against women, men, transgender individuals, and children. We are hanging a UCSF clothesline that will bear witness with t-shirts that will bear witness to intimate partner violence. And I'm asking if you'll stand with us and make a t-shirt honoring victims and survivors of interpartner violence. 
You are welcome to join us in the Healing Garden at the Center of Excellence in Women's Health tomorrow at noon on, on our Women's Health Wednesday event to make a t-shirt and hang in honor. And we are asking, um, if you can't make it then, Chancellor, because I know you're busy, we'll be happy <laughs> to bring a t-shirt to your office this afternoon and paints or tomorrow morning so that we can hang it as a part of your, the ceremony. <laughs> so will you stand with us and do that? So, so Judy, uh, let me first thank you for your, for your leadership and, and encourage in this uh, very important de debate that's going on. As you know, Janet Napolitano, the president of the UC system, has taken an intensely personal interest mm -hmm. in, in this uh, uh, crisis, uh, particularly uh, on the university campuses, but more broadly in, in society. And I would be, I would be happy uh, to do my best, although my artwork is uh, pretty abysmal, so I will need uh, some guidance on a T-shirt. Unfortunately, I can't do it tomorrow because uh, I will be over at the office of the president all, all day with, with the president. Uh, but if you uh, could drop by the office here this afternoon, I will do my best to splash some paint in a meaningful <laughs> way to add to your clothesline. That'd be fabulous. The invitation is open to anyone who would like to come tomorrow to our event. We just have one final question from online, and that is, what are the top qualities you're looking for in those who are employed at UCSF today? And how has that changed from the shifts in our environment? You know, I, I, the qualities I look for in people to join our community I think uh, bread bedrock qualities and uh, shouldn't and don't uh, change with changing environments. What, what I'm looking for is people who uh, have integrity, have intense curiosity, uh, want to make the world a better place uh, than they find it, um, and are interested in collaborative, open, mutually respectful teamwork. I think if you, if you focus on those and a few other, uh, other core values that I think resonate across the entire UCSF community, uh, we won't go wrong and there's no need to recalibrate our values uh, to the external environment. Clearly we recalibrate our tactics and our strategies uh, but not our core values. And uh, fortunately I think the, the talent that we have across the entire UCSF community, all 23,000 people who call UCSF a family uh, adhere to those values and uh, it's, it's what makes me uh, so proud uh, to contribute back in whatever way I can. So thank you. So please if, uh, if you could uh, stay for a little while and enjoy the reception outside and uh, can, I, can I ask one question? Network. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Hello Chancellor. Uh, thank you for the talk. Um, I was just wondering, you talked a little bit about housing and the housing crisis that's going on. Um, and I think a big part of UCSF moving forward is retention of not only medical students, but fellows that are going to other places because of the cost of the, sc of the school and also how much it costs to live here. Um, and I know some of my classmates uh, talk about that a lot. And um, I'm from the School of Medicine, by the way. Um, and my name is Tomas Tesfasolase. Um, so I was wondering, Outside of um, creating the group that's going to be looking at it this year, are there any things that you specifically want to see coming out of the school that are going to affect students not only in the scholarship department but also uh, housing? Yeah, so we, we've been very actively working uh, on the issue of housing. We are prioritizing uh, students, residents, fellows, postdocs first. Um, we recognize the issue applies equally heavily on the shoulders of our staff and our faculty, but our immediate priority is on our student population, broadly defined to include fellows. Uh, Dan Lowenstein is taking the lead in this, uh, and uh, we've had a, a very active group with the strong support of the real estate subcommittee of our foundation board, made up of uh, 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 true real estate talent in the city, and uh, we, we already have a number of very defined initiatives underway. Um, a couple I cannot speak about because they involve transactions that are, that are still under negotiation. Uh, we recognize that a key need is to build more, but there is a lag time in that, so we are also looking at very short-term issues um, uh, to address 
uh, potentially subsidization of housing and other strategies to have a shorter term impact. So you will definitely be hearing more about this over the next couple of weeks. It's not an issue that we'll spend a year studying before we get back to you. Thank you all.